In this video, I want to cover the steps that you, one would do to import a model from SolidWorks and console, ap apply new domains uh, that don't exist in the original SolidWorks model, and then perform a uh, standard simulation like you would do if you were making the models from scratch in console. That's because sometimes we receive models from vendors or customers uh, in SolidWorks and it saves time if we can import them into console and then just do, do the simulation instead of trying to make that from scratch, which could be not exactly the same thing that the vendor sent us with the, uh, the SolidWorks model. So in this case, I'm going to import a Solid, SolidWorks model of a cold plate, courtesy of one of my students who did this model in SolidWorks. And then I want to go through steps that would uh, be necessary into converting it into a console model and then using the or doing the simulations. So I go to model wizard and do a 3D analysis. Uh, in my case, because this is a cold plate, I'm going to have to pick under heat transfer, the conjugate heat transfer and laminar flow. That's what I want to do in my simulation. And then it has the heat transfer transferring solids and fluids, also laminar flow for the fluid mechanics. So I can go to study and I can pick stationary for the steady state analysis. So I can double click in here and then wait for console to create the environment. So the first thing I want to do, because I know the SOLIDWORKS model was built in millimeters and console's un default units are in meters, I want to make sure that when I import the, the model, it is not in meters. I don't have a 87 meter, for example, long uh, cold plate. It's going to be in millimeters. So in order to avoid any conflicts in terms of the uh, units or dimensions, I want to change the unit length from meters to millimeters. Next, I'm going to right click and do import. And on, uh, on this panel, I can create or click on browse and look for the, uh, uh, the SOLIDWORKS model that I want to import into console. Again, this is courtesy of one of my students who made this console model. I'm going to uh, import this in, or SOLIDWORKS model that I want to import in console. So I can double click on this. And one note I have to mention is that you can only do this if you have the SOLIDWORKS add-on or, uh, or feature added to your console uh, software. In this case, I have the SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS add-on uh, in my console uh, program. If you don't have it, this step is going to uh, give you an error because it will not be able to read the SOLIDWORKS file. Sometimes this works with STL files and sometimes it doesn't. STLs could be tricky, but SOLIDWORKS usually works for this purpose. After I click Browse, I can do Build Selected and then wait for console to read through the SOLIDWORKS file and then, file and then import that in console. And one thing I want to do is to change this view so it's easier for my vision. So again, as you see, this is just a little cold plate. It doesn't have uh, the water domain. So I need to do some more steps into preparing this into for a uh, typical cold plate analysis. I need to create a, a block first that engulfs this cold plate. And then I have to do some Boolean actions to remove that part or parts of that block to have the interior of this cold plate filled with the domain for water. So I want to create a block. But in order to be able to create the block, I need to be able to create uh, the or know the dimensions of this block. Like I said, this block is going to engulf this entire cold plate. So I can uh, select points. And through that, I can find the lengths and coordinates of some of the important points. So if I click on a point here and then a corresponding point on the other end in let an outlet, and under geometry tab, click on measure. I can find the length in the Z direction right here. And then if I undo selecting these points, I zoom out and then select here, the bottom left corner and the bottom right corner. I can select this one as well. And then do measure. It tells me that in the x direction is 25 millimeters, in the y direction is 12 millimeters, 
and the z direction is about 87.5 uh, or something but i'm not gonna uh, round off i'm just gonna copy this number in my block so i'm gonna create a block with the x dimension of 25 y dimension of 12 and z dimension of this number that i'm gonna copy and paste here if i just say build selected you see that the, the block is not where it is supposed to be that is not what i wanted so the first thing i want now the other thing i want to do is to determine the coordinates of the bottom left corner of my uh, block so in the z direction it must be at the same coordinate as this surface so i click this point and they say measure and i see that the uh the z coordinate is at minus 56 point something i'm going to copy this number and paste it over here oh, i didn't paste yet okay if i do build selected now in terms of the z direction it's fine in terms of the y direction it is not as you can see it is not perfectly engulfing it but if i move this by one millimeter in the y or minus one millimeter in the y direction and do build selected as you can see now the block is completely engulfing the cold plate i want to unselect this point and i want to go to domain selection now i want to remove parts of this uh, block because the uh, the outside part of the block is not part of my calculations so in order to do that i come into booleans and click difference for the add I would select the block and for the subtract I would select the cold plate now before I click build selected I have to remember that I want to keep the cold plate which is what I'm subtracting from the block so in order to not remove the cold plate I enable or check this keep object to subtract and then I say build selected now I have to make sure that I'm selecting domains and I want to select this part and this part and then I can press delete on the keyboard now I have one domain which is now selected in red uh, this is the cold plate and then the interior is going to be where the water is now before I move forward I want to do a couple more things uh, I want to partition this domain into a uh, few more domains I can then be able to see the interior of the cold plate when the like how the water flows inside I can also apply symmetry instead of having the full model to be analyzed to do these I need to create a couple work planes and then I want to do partitioning so let's create a work plane not quick but instead face parallel parallel to this face and I want to first partition halfway through the thickness of this cold plate so I can hide the top half to see what's going on inside this cold plate right now the distance from the uh, surface is zero basically meaning that the plate uh, the work plane is on the surface but I want to give it halfway through if you remember the thickness of this cold plate was 12 so 6 would be halfway but the Z direction is away from the plate going away from the heat sink or cold plate so if I reverse the normal direction you see that the work plane is now in the middle of the cold plate and I can do build select it after I do that I can uh, come into booleans and partition my domains let's zoom out and for the domains I want to partition all, all of my domains so I just do a select box and it select everything the partition with the with respect to the work plane and I can say work uh, build selected as you can see now I have two domains for the top and bottom of the cold plate and two domains for the top and bottom of water this way I can hide part uh, half of this uh, cold plate I can see what's happening inside of it but also I know that if I look in the uh, Z, YZ direction this is a perfectly symmetric um, cold plate so I can remove half of it and apply symmetry in order to save simulation runtime so I want to create another work plane select a work plane and again uh, face parallel say parallel to this face and this time is 
the, the length in the X direction was 25, so I have to go 12.5, half of that. And again, I have to reverse the direction. As you can see, it's this cold, this work plane is halfway through the thick, uh, the width of the cold plate. I can say build selected. Once again, I want to partition my domains, and uh, to go to do that, I go to Boolean partition domains, and then I can say select box, select everything, and then build selected. Now I have uh, divided all of my uh, domains into quarters. But again, I want to apply half of my model to uh, apply symmetry and then save simulation runtime. So make sure that I'm doing selecting domains. I can just select and press delete, select, delete, select, delete, and select, delete. Now I have only half of my model in console. Seems to be ready, but the other thing I want to do is to create a an area at the bottom surface of this cold plate for the chip. Again, I need to create a work plane because the chip is going to be a 2D geometry, not a 3D geometry. So create a work plane and then select uh, face parallel and right parallel to this face. And this time I don't need, I don't need to apply a uh, f uh, an offset. So I'm, gonna, I'm happy with this. I can click on plane geometry and then I can create a rectangle. In the X direction, it's going to be 25, the length from this point to this point. And the Y direction, because I've cut my model into half, is going to be 12.5. And the corner is going to be at uh, minus 12.5 in the X direction and minus 6.25 in the Y direction. So minus 12.5 and minus 6.25. If I do build selected, this is the area where I'm going to apply the power to my uh, chip. Come here, I build selected, and if I look 3D, it looks like I have everything. One thing that is not necessary, this is optional, I like to do it because uh, this, this way it looks like uh, the cold plate is defying uh, gravity by, uh, for the water going upward. Uh, it's not that happening. It's just my preference. I want to see this cold plate in the XY plane instead of the XZ plane. So in order to do that, I can do a rotate from transforms. I can rotate this uh, whole domain about the X axis and I can give a uh, degree of 90 degrees. Uh, now the chip is upside so I can make it mi minus 90 degrees. So for the chip to go down and I can have the entire thing uh, created. So one last step, do build all. Make sure console figures out all the overlapping areas. Now I want to start working on my analysis. Just like previous cases, I could uh, select some uh, definitions, explicit definitions. In this case, I want to skip that. Uh, in order to save time, but I could do the same thing that I, that I used to do in my previous videos. Uh, I want to apply materials, but before I do that, and before I, uh, in order to uh, to save the headache, the first thing I want to do is to make sure that in the solid, or the heat transfer in solid and fluid, the fluid is applied to these two domains, so that solid is not incorporating those. And when it comes to the laminar flow, the top and bottom domains, which are actually the the solid part of the cold plate, are not in, incorporated in the laminar flow calculations. Now I can right click on materials, apply materials, and then let's say from for the body of the heat sink, I want to select copper. By default, even the water domains has been selected, and that's not correct, so I'm going to unselect them. I want to scroll down, and then I'm going to select water. And right now there's no domain selected, so I can just click here and here for water. So the materials are properly applied. I have to apply boundary conditions. The first thing I want to do is, before I forget, I want to apply the symmetry. So right click on the domain and do symmetry for heat sink, for the heat transfer, and just click the surfaces through which I have symmetry in my geometry. Then I want to apply the inlet condition. 
So right click on heat transfer, go to flow and do inflow and select the inlet surfaces like actually zoom in so it's easier to see and you can give the temperature 20, 293 is about 20 degrees celsius that's a good temperature of inlet water so i'm going to keep it like that and while we're here let's right click on the laminar flow and do inlet select the same two surfaces for the inlet and in this case i have to apply the velocity for it to be perfectly laminar let's say 0.1 may be a good uh, velocity for this to stay laminar and also I have to apply symmetry to the fluid so let's right click and do symmetry and apply the two surfaces as you can see I cannot select the top and bottom surfaces of the top and uh, or the, uh, the surfaces of the top and bottom uh, domains because they do not apply to the laminar flow uh, that's solid now I can rotate my model go back to uh, the heat transfer and then select from the fluid the outflow and this is going to be my output or outlet there's no input for that so I'm going to keep it as is let's do the same thing for the laminar flow go to outlet select these two surfaces and keep the pressure at zero one last thing is to apply the power that is going into the chip so right click on the heat transfer and do heat flux and then I want to give uh, let's say 40 power or 40 watt of power going in the chip so this is now selected if I uh, or complete uh, the modeling and applying boundary conditions and if I look at the uh, the coupling areas that's also properly applied uh, the last step before I run the simulation is to mesh this uh, for the sake of this one I want to make it a little bit coarse so it doesn't take too long for it to compute so I can say build all after selecting selecting the element size and I can wait for it it would take a few minutes sometimes for it to complete the meshing and the mesh is selected and in this case as you can see there are some warnings so I should better if I want to really have an accurate model I have to make this finer but again for the sake of this example and make this not a very long simulation I'm going to keep it as coarse uh, and then once I'm doing actual simulations I can make the mesh finer for more accurate results so I can select study and then I can create comp or click compute this one is going to take some time uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to take. If it's taking too long, I will pause this video and I will resume once the simulation is over. This one is calculating about 200,000 degrees of freedom. So I'm hoping it doesn't take too long. All right, so as you can see, the simulation is over. It took about two and a half minutes uh, and uh, uh, console creates some uh, default re uh, results like temperature and velocity uh, I wanna remove some of these from my default results if I look at the temperature I can see this and I can change the color map from whatever it is to let's say rainbow classic which is uh, common in most FBA programs so let's see for now I want to see what happens in the bottom half of this cold plate so I can come to geometry and click on hide make sure I'm selecting uh, so let me undo this selecting domains I want to hide the top domains and I want to just see what happens in this bottom half so I can create a database of surfaces and I can select all of these surfaces you can call it bottom half so that's going to be the bottom half surface and then if I want to actually have a, a full uh, model instead of like a half of it with symmetry I can come into data sets go to more data sets and then select mirror and then instead of having the data set from the study solution I can select the bottom half data set 
and I think uh, over YZ plane should be fine. So if I do plot, it doesn't look all right. So let's say this is, uh, I think in the X direction 12.5, or actually I can say, uh, let's see if this works. Yeah, so I had to offset that by 12.5. So it seems like a uh, the exact complete half bottom half of this uh, cold plate. So I can change this to bottom half mirrored. So that's the data set I want to use for my next uh, plots I want to generate. So if I go to results, do 3D, and then change the data set to the last one that I created. And then I can say surface plots. And by default is temperature. So I'm going to, ha I'm happy with that. I can say plot it. And this shows the temperatures inside the cold plate. If I want to see the velocity inside the cold plate, I can repeat the same thing. Uh, so I can do, go to results, do a volume, uh, and then Basically, I said 3D plot group and then the surface. But before that, let's change this to um, change the data set to bottom half mirrored. And instead of temperature, now in this case, I want to have velocities. So click on this green and red button, come into laminar flow, find the velocity and pressure. And I'm actually looking for the mag magnitude of velocity, meters per second. So I just click that replot and in this case as you can see there is no velocities in the solid solid parts it's only in the fluid part so if i uh, look in the xy plane this is how the velocities look so as you can see the velocity at the each channel is not equal the channels in the middle have a, uh, a higher velocity at the inlet of the channels versus the ones at the sides now, what if I want to see, I want to know the maximum minimum temperature of the chip at the bottom, uh, or at, at uh, maximum and minimum temperature of, of the chip. So I can say derive values. And let me actually make it not wireframe. It's not wireframe. All right. So I come to mag. So again, go to derive values. I want to find the maximum temperature of the bottom surface. So I can select surface maximum. Turn this and select the chip. And by default, it's temperature. So I can change this to chip temperature max and do evaluate. So I can see it's about 310 degrees Kelvin. Then I can look at the minimum temperature of this chip by doing a uh, Right click, minimum, surface minimum. Again, the chip itself. And in this case, I want to evaluate this in the same table that I had my maximum temperature. And if I look at this table, and if I also look at this, I can see the minimum maximum temperature. Now, if I wanted to have a more thorough study like I've done in my previous videos, uh, I could run this for various inlet velocities and inlet temperatures and uh, uh, have val various values for maximum and minimum temperatures of the, the chip and then do a thorough analysis. I have done these post processes in uh, my other videos. The purpose of this video was just to show you that you can import a model from SOLIDWORKS uh, like I did in geometry then apply the same processes that you would do typically in a console model to partition this and uh, do boundary conditions, apply symmetry, and perform analysis like you would do regularly. And all the post-processings that you would do for uh, the other videos I've made on YouTube would be applied to the same uh, cold plate. Like you could draw a line in here, you could find the temperature uh, uh, gradient or temperature distribution along this a diagonal. We could also find the pressure drop between the inlet and the outlet. And everything else that we did in the previous videos would apply to the same video or same simulation. I hope this video was uh, helpful. You learned how to 
import models and perform steps to create domains and perform a regular simulation that you would do in console.